This week we're traveling to a galaxy far, far away with the opening of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland. And then we're checking out Meow Wolf's new attraction inside Elitch Gardens. Plus the latest theme park news and more coming at you from the attraction studio at Give Kids the World Village right, right now. now. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the show. I'm Banks. And I'm Elisa. And I am back once again this week. Quinn's yes, still over there in California. You know, I think he got stuck on bot two. <laughs> he, he might have lost his intergalactic passport. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> He's like, I'm living here now. It's fine. It's fine. That's what he wanted. So Exactly. So well, I guess we'll see you later, Quinn. Yeah. No, he'll be back next week. But um, speaking of Galaxy's Edge, it's we can now say it after four years it is officially open that's right super exciting i loved watching a lot of the videos and the footage i i can't wait to see it here in orlando i know just a couple more months but you know they should fly by now yeah overall it seemed like uh, based on kind of the wait times and the reviews that the operation ran very smoothly opening day i i think that the their reservation system worked to a charm because mm -hmm. like I saw, you know, you saw a few crowd photos of people who are getting, trying to get into the land all at once. But other than that, like, the crowds are very scattered throughout the land. The wait time, I don't really think I saw it go over 60 minutes for yeah. Millennium Falcon. So it seems like that they did a really good job. And I kind of, I'm kind of hoping now they maybe bring that reservation yeah. system to ours. I do too. I think it makes it a much more enjoyable experience rather than just fighting crazy amounts of crowds while you're in there. Yeah. You can't enjoy it that way. And it's so. only for the first month. Uh, after right. June 23rd, it's going to be a free for all. So we'll see how it does on the 24th. Mm -hmm. But I, I kind of would hope that they bring it to here for the first month. Um, from, from stats, we have over 25 videos right now on our YouTube channel. I, I think exactly 28 or 29 at, at the moment. I wow. We were working over time to get all these videos up. Mm -hmm. um, we have combined our view counts of all of our videos between YouTube and Facebook. We have over 1 million views right wow. now. So it's like everyone is in Star Wars fever. <laughs> uh, if you're looking for something specific, chances are we've got it. So head over to youtube.com slash attractions magazine. If you don't want to, don't care about being spoiled, go dive right in and take a journey to Batuu. Oh, that's awesome. I can't wait to watch more. All right, we'll be right back after a message from our sponsors. You can get a free meal per person, ages three and up, per night at a select Walt Disney World Resort quick service dining location with a special offer from Mouse Fan Travel. To get a free quote with no obligation, head to mousefantravel.com. For a limited time, take an extra $5 off select Florida and California theme park tickets with Undercover Tourist's Fun in the Sun offer. For more information on this and other discount ticket deals, visit undercovertourist.com. This holiday season, Minnie's wonderful Christmas time fireworks and all new fireworks spectacular will light up the skies above Magic Kingdom during Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. Hosted by Minnie Mouse herself, this new show will celebrate the holidays with medleys of Christmas songs like Joy to the World, Deck the Halls, Up on the Housetop, and We Wish You a Merry Christmas. Guests will be able to check out this new show during Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party on select nights from November 8th through December 22nd, 2019. Well, there we go. I mean, we've already heard that they are replacing Hallow Wishes for the Halloween no. party, and now Goodbye Holiday Wishes. I Never know. got to say goodbye to these shows. Never got to say goodbye. We can watch them on YouTube. Exactly. It's okay. Exactly. <laughs> No, I love Very Merry Christmas. It's such a fun night. You know, aside from the fireworks, they'll still have the show offerings. Elsa's still going to be lighting up the castle. Oh, yeah. oh, You'll yeah. still get your hot chocolate. And this will be the only change for the Very right. Merry Christmas party this year, which I, but I'm honestly think it's a welcome change. I mean, right. now that Wishes itself has been gone for two years now, it's, it's, uh, it's good to see them kind of updating the Halloween and Christmas wishes uh, to a different Version. Exactly. Now that the technology has gotten a little better over the years, it's cool that we're able to, to keep up with that with other fireworks shows. I'll be excited to see it. Yeah. Now, SeaWorld Orlando has announced that a new coaster is coming in 2020, but we know very little about the new attraction beyond that. The new coaster will be themed, feature heights and thrills, and the announcement video features bird sounds. Hmm, if you ask us, 
our money is on some kind of predatory bird themed coaster. Mm -hmm. Of course, rumors have been swirling about this coaster for a few months now. Um, Midway Mayhem uh, shout them out because they've been doing a good job with keeping track of a lot of the rumors and the uh, per, uh, construction permits. Um, it looks like, I was at SeaWorld just the other day taking Oliver to Sesame Street and I mm -hmm. saw walls up along the lagoon between uh, the um, Seaside Theater and Shamu Stadium and Wild Arctic. Okay. So kind of right behind that little quick service uh, place right there. Yeah. That's where I'm seeing walls are going up. So maybe that, that might be the location for this coaster. That's exciting. I, I just think it's so crazy. Like, how many new coasters are coming to SeaWorld? But it, it's thrilling. And Seems like every other year now. Yeah, it's been it's been going. You know, And I wouldn't be mad if they got rid of Wild Arctic. I would not be mad at all. I've, I've been saying for a long time that Wild Arctic needs to go bye-bye. Because yeah. I had a bad experience on that ride once, and I will never ride it again. Oof. It, or I don't at least even want to get say rid what of happened. the ride experience. And, you know. Yeah, yeah. Keep the animals. The exhibits, the animals are really cool, but yeah. yeah that ride needs to go for sure. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to hear more about this coaster. Exactly. <laughs> now, the Walt Disney Archives is set to return to D23 Expo 2019, and this time with an all new exhibit, Walt Disney Archives presents Heroes and Villains The Art of the Disney Costume. More than 70 costumes from the 55 years of Disney films and television shows will be on display from August 23rd to the 25th at the Anaheim Convention Center during the convention. Many of the costumes on display will be featured in The Art of Disney Costuming, Heroes, Villains, and Spaces Between, a new book from Disney Editions out this September. The book will also be available for purchase in advance exclusively at D23 Expo 2019. This sounds like it's gonna be a fun exhibit. The past three expos that I've gone to, the archives has always had a really great exhibit to look yeah, at. Yeah. You, you went to Expo one year. You, yeah, you saw 2016 this. Mm -hmm. we went. Yeah. 16? It'd be 15. 15. It's it's the odd Oof. years. Oh, you're right. Wow. <laughs> Where is time? No. No, right? <laughs> no, it does sound like a really cool exhibit, especially for, you know, all the people coming there that are dressed in their own costumes to be able to see them. The like, actual, like, so screen cool. used costumes. Yeah. Uh, I, I look forward to seeing photos from that. I'm not going this year, so I'm going to live vicariously through all of our uh, coverage, but it looks like it's going to be a fun one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, starting May 31st, the thrills and fun go later and longer at Bush Gardens Tampa Bay with the return of their Summer Nights event. The event includes extended hours every night through August 11th and fireworks every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Park guests can also enjoy a special summer menu that offers classic bites with a twist. I don't get out to Bush Gardens that often anymore. I'm just so busy with, with, with work and the kids that yeah. the only time I really get out there is when I'm covering an opening right. or something. Right. No, I agree. I was just thinking that. Man, it's been a while since I've been out to Bush Gardens. And to be honest, it's really not that far from Orlando. It really isn't. Yeah. It's just about an hour if you get good traffic. And it is super fun to be at that park at night. So I'll have to get out to summer nights this year. Oddly enough, I have, I've I've been there at night, but I've never been there for summer nights. So I've yeah. never gotten to see the fireworks at that park. So that's Me too. Summer, like maybe a try to make a point to get out there this summer. Yeah, absolutely. Spring brings warmer weather and a brand new issue of Attractions Magazine. Get ready to waste away again at the new Margaritaville Resort Orlando. It's the 50th anniversary of the moon landing and the Apollo 11 legacy is front and center at the Kennedy Space Center. We fly over Orlando's most exciting theme park projects with a new photo update. Plus the latest news, rumors, and more packed into every issue. Get your copy and subscribe today at attractionsmagazine.com in print or digital in our app on Nook and Kindle. This past week, intergalactic travelers ventured out to Disneyland Park to experience Star Wars Galaxy's Edge for the first time. From the food, the characters, the Falcon, we were there to experience it all firsthand. Let's take a look at Quinn's report. It's finally happened, guys. I'm, I'm finally here. I'm on Batu in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland Resort. I, I've been dying. I've been here for like a day and a half now. It's, it's been crazy. Um, here's a look at all the stuff I've been doing. Walking up to the Falcon right now. God. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's so crazy. 
it's so crazy. Look, look at that, guys. Look at it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look at, look at its glory. Look at how beautiful it is. It's just. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Come in, come in. I have an opportunity for you all that is very dangerous. I was going to say profitable. You think I'm so heartless I would send my friends to danger? I am Hondo Onaka, and this is Onaka Transport Solutions. Today, I am offering the opportunity of a lifetime. I need flight crews to transport this valuable merchandise across the galaxy. So we got the, the pathway down to the turret over here. Um, that, that might need a little re repairs over here. Oh, here, here he is. Here he is, Steve Goddard. Hi. The expert on the Millennium Falcon Absolutely. right now. Uh, let's, let's sit here at the hollow chest table and let's talk about some of the details that we have here on the Falcon, like um, Luke's helmet. Um, we got a Porg's nest. Yeah, this is the helmet that Luke was wearing when he's learning how to use a lightsaber. Mm -hmm. Porgs, they've been all over this ship. We've been trying to get them all out. There's one here, they're kind of scattered around. Every now and then you hear them chirping in the background. Yeah, I, th I think I just heard one. Mm -hmm. And then um, over there we got Chewie's bed. There's, mm -hmm. just, there's just a million details on this ship for people to look at while they're waiting for the attraction, correct? Yeah, so when we come in here, you're assigned your boarding card and then you're free mm -hmm. to just walk around. Everything in here is touchable. You can push the buttons, the lights all do something. You can just explore the, the whole ship. All right, and then on the attraction itself, what can guests expect? So guests are actually flying the Millennium Falcon. This yes. is not just a ride along, you're piloting. Mm -hmm. So we have six positions. There's two pilots, one that steers left and right, one awesome. back and up and down. And then we have gunners and we have engineers. So the gunners are shooting the TIE fighters, they're protecting the ship, and the engineers, they're repairing the damage that the pilots and the gunners may have incurred on the ship. Yeah, I actually did get a chance to ride uh, a few times now, three times. I was a pilot um, on the one side once, pilot on the other side the next time, and then I was a gunner. So I still need to try the engineering uh, standpoint there, but um, the piloting is just, I love, like, I was really in control you, of the Falcon. You are flying it's, the ship. It's, 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 it's definitely the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy, but, you know, it is still a hunk of junk. Yeah, there's yeah. some things that go wrong every now and then yeah, with it. Oh, oh, God. Over here! Okay, Get over this there, red button! There. Okay, alright, um, the, the button's gonna fix this, whatever. Absolutely, push it! Alright, okay. Okay. Alright. Alright, we're good. We're good. It's, it's all... It's all fixed. I was just about to say that. Pilot on the right. Two oh! I did it! Oh, 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 don't hit this oh, 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 Weapons are on life. Left pilot. This is you, Quinn. Booster! Booster! Let's go get that coaxial. All right. Make the jump to light speed. Come on, this was all you, that's, Quinn. No, it's you. Oh, yeah, that's right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See, I still did it, though. <laughs> We're somewhere. Oh, my gosh. Oh! We're shooting TIE fighters. Oh, yes. Yes, keep shooting. Keep shooting. <laughs> they block out to us. Thank you, Daisy Duckshot. <laughs> <laughs> Put us down! Look at crashing! I know I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying. Ah. <sighs> I just got off the Falcon. I uh, I stole that coaxium, and it was it was so amazing. I. It's just it's it's that's that's I don't know how they're gonna one up it for Rise of the Resistance. It's. I mean, I, it's, it was crazy, absolutely, 100% insane. I'm in Dock on Dar's Den of Antiquities right now. It's crazy. They got tons of stuff in here. They got like Jedi murals. They have um, all sorts of artifacts. On this side of the store, they have the Jedi artifacts. And then back where I just walked over from, um, that's like the Sith artifacts. They have some really cool um, animatronics in here. They got right here, they got a baby Sarlacc pit. He's, he's just a little baby. He's in there. He's sitting there. And uh, the coolest thing in here, over here, is Doc Ondar himself. There he is. He is crazy awesome. He, look at him. 
All right, we're here in the marketplace, um, of course, in Black Spire Outpost, and uh, we have a ton of different stores in here. This is Reese. She's going to tell us all about the stores. Yes, absolutely. We're going to check out the first one, which is right behind us. All right, let's go. So we have a total of four stalls here at the marketplace. We're going to take a look at three of them today. Okay, no problem. First one is Black Spire Outfitters. Okay. This is where we were going to outfit you for your next sort of galactic celebration. Sounds like something I'm interested in. Awesome. Okay, so what's really fun about the um, items that we have here is that when they developed this product, they actually went to Lucasfilm Archives and pulled the patterns from the costumes that the actors actually wore on screen. That's amazing. Yeah, so these are super authentic um, apparel items so that you can really get into character and live your Star Wars adventure. So what's neat about Toy Dare, so the story here uh, is that it's obviously run by a Toy Darian alien. Yeah, I, see, um, I think I see her up there. You too. So that is Zabaka up there in her office working, uh, working, toiling away. Um, so zabaka has been here for a very long time and is very familiar with the stories and lore and history of some sort of galactic um, uh, struggle that's going on out yes. there, which is why you'll find characters like Darth Vader and uh, Princess Leia and Lando Calrissian here, but you'll also find Rey and Kylo, and of course the mainstay, Chewbacca's just kind of always there, right? Yeah, I, I <laughs> really love, needs a Chewbacca. I really love Watto here. Yes, so cute. absolutely. Another Toy Darian. Not the one that runs this joint, but yeah. you know, he gets a little nod here. <laughs> um, but what's fun about this, you know, just looking again at the um, the craftsmanship of the, the items. Zabaka mm -hmm found items on the planet, whether it's wood, uh, metal, or tin, to handcraft uh, okay artisan to gifts. These up? Yeah, sure, awesome. go ahead. So you picked up Sabak. I'm very interested in playing this. Yeah, I hear I hear if you're pretty good at that game, you might win some sort of hunk of junk. I'm, I'm not in, yeah, yeah, I yeah. think I think that's uh, something about one of the Kessel Run. One of the like things that. you can um, you can bet on. Yeah, you there know, you go. Out there. <laughs> A wager if you will. So we're gonna head across the way. This is actually yes. my favorite part All of right. the marketplace. So this is the creature stall. Yeah, it's and we got a cute little loft cat. We do sleeping in here. Oh, He's taking it a nap. tore up the little porg. Well, it's okay. We're, we know where to get a new one. Yeah, right across you're right. the way. So the story behind this location is uh, it's run by Bina. Okay. And she uh, travels the galaxy to find unique creatures to bring back here to Batu for guests to adopt and take home with mm -hmm. them. We do have loaf cats available for adoption, actually. Yes. And each one of the creatures does something fun. The loaf cat, if you pet him, he purrs, and if he gets sort of temperamental, he gets a little oh, upset. Oh, wow. <laughs> we have warts, oh. dewbacks, minox, puffer pigs. This guy oh. <laughs> makes a fun little noise. <laughs> Um, Porgs and Banthas, these guys became friends while we were here today. Um, and we have Tauntauns, uh, and if you're feeling adventurous, we have Wampos and Raptars. So I got my Ronto wrap right here at Ronto Roasters. I've been, really been looking forward to trying this. Uh, looks like it has multiple types of meat on here. Got some coleslaw look, oops, got some coleslaw looking stuff, and then obviously like the hot dog. But let's just try it. It's kind of a hot dog flavor, like on a falafel. It's very good. I'm definitely going to get this again. Here I have some fried Andorran Yip Tip in a jar. And I don't know what that is, but I'm going to eat it because it looks good. And it's from Endor, so. Okay, so it tastes like chicken. Hmm. This sort is like pea puree and mashed potatoes and carrots and chicken, so. Very good. It's time to try some more foods. These are all desserts. Um, we got the blue and the green milk here. I'm super, super excited for those. And this is Aga's Obsession, which is sort of like a jello thing um, from the cantina. And this is an oi oi puff. So the oi oi puff has got a little uh, Black Spire logo on it there and chocolate. Nice chocolate. Let me try this. Wow. It's got like matcha and. Um, <laughs> like a strawberry sort of flavor and white chocolate, I think. Very good. August Obsession. It has Pop Rocks and Popping Boba. It's like a lot of action occurring. It's not what I expected. It's good. And here's the moment we've all been waiting for, is the blue and the green milk. All right, I'm gonna start with the green milk since it's the lesser known. Whoa. Whoa, this was not the um, flavor I was expecting. It's really light. It's, it's ref it'd be refreshing definitely on a hot day, which is what you want, but let's see. Oh, I like that a lot more. It's, it's definitely a fruit flavor. Um, wow, yeah. 
This is great. This cantina is literally the best place in the whole land. And that's saying something, because I'm like, I'm obsessed with this whole place, but like, I, this is the most fun besides the Falcon. The Falcon was like, a lot. But this, it's, it's a party in here. They were playing the cantina band music um, from the original movie. And then the, the, it was like a remixed version. And then the, just, just a ton of original music. I want to download all of it. And DJ Rex is here, and I, I had, um, uh, what was it, uh, Java Juice. And it was really good. It had, it didn't have alcohol in it, even though I might sound like I've had a little bit of alcohol. I didn't. Okay, I'm right here next to the Millennium Falcon in this very large crowd of people standing all around. And we're waiting for the dedication ceremony of the land. And uh, they said there was going to be a few surprises, so I guess we'll find out what that means. Peter. This one's for you! Nice. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is now open. Uh, they just did the dedication. <laughs> Harrison Ford came out, and Mark Hamill, and George Lucas, and Billy Dee Williams, and I'm crying. I am crying. You are totally crying. I'm totally crying. Han Solo was just up there. I know. So that's just a little taste of what you can find here on Batu in Black Spire Outpost. It's amazing, it's immersive, it's near to my heart because it's just it's Star Wars and that's really my thing. And I feel like no matter how many times I come here, I'm just gonna find something new. Rise of the Resistance hasn't even opened yet, it's opening later this year. Um, the one in Disney World is gonna open on August 29th. Of, of course, if you guys wanna go here or to the one there, they are gonna have reservations for a, a period of time. So you are going to have to check on Disney World or Disneyland's website just to figure out what you can do. I can get him taken off behind me, but you know what, that's fine because that's, that kind of stuff just happens here. It just happens and you got to go with the flow because it's just people are living their lives here on Batuu and I'm, I'm glad to finally be one of them and you can too soon. MEI and Mouse Fan Travel is your expert source for no-fee travel planning. Visit mei-travel.com for a no-obligation quote today. Skip the lines with undercover tourists, crowd calendars, touring plans, and mobile apps. Stop paying full price for your family vacation and visit Undercover Tours today. A new artist-focused dark ride, Meow Wolf's Collide Escape, is now open at Elitch Gardens Theme and Water Park in Denver, Colorado. This new attraction takes guests on a fully immersive and interactive experience as they experience otherworldly motion, deep sound, wild color, and take part in challenges that just might save the day. And our reporter Josh got to see it all. Over to you, Josh. Hey, this is Josh Taylor here representing Attractions Magazine at Denver's Elitch Gardens and we're here to check out the brand new Meow Wolf attraction and the dark ride, Collide Escape. Collide Escape is a ride that takes you on a voyage from minimal to maximal and back again. For us to find ourselves doing our second permanent installation in an amusement park is amazing and like totally unexpected, but somehow like really fitting. This project definitely represents an innovation in theme parks in general. And by Meow Wolf and Elitch collaborating on this, I hope that this sparks a rethinking of like, oh, what can a ride be? 
if you go to Meow Wolf, you might spend like two or three hours in there, like trying to see everything. But here it's like we have under three minutes to bend your mind completely. Kaleidoscape is a low poly video game meets a yard sale in the fifth dimension. I'm here with Emily Montoya and Matt King, who helped create this attraction, Kaleidoscape at Elish Gardens. So every room here is a little bit different. Can you guys tell me like about what each room kind of was a work of? Like, is it something specific or is it an ongoing story? Well, the idea behind the ride is that you start out minimal and go to maximal. So you start out with a tiny point of light, which grows and multiplies and then evolves into a fully realized landscape that morphs and like gains complexity as it goes. And then um, the idea behind it is that this is a ride that is um, a simulator by the Quantum Department of Transportation, or QDOT, as they're called. And they're going to figure into the narrative of our exhibition in Denver that we're opening 2020. So what is the actual inspiration behind this attraction? Is it uh, all those classic carnival dark rides? Is it more of the Disneyland kind of dark ride? Like, what are you guys thinking when you decided to do this? Being inspired by these kind of rides our whole life, um, I, I, th I think the medium of, of being on a car and, and taking the singular path is what is inspiring to us. But we, we sort of threw everything out the window when you look at classic dark rides. And, and yes, you're on the car, you have the path, but everything else inside is, is very much just Meow Wolf. Overload. Meow Wolf right. overload, yeah. check it out and uh, make sure to subscribe like and all that good stuff here at attractions magazine my name's josh taylor and uh come check out kaleidoscape have you downloaded our free attractions magazine app it features news articles as well as every issue of our magazine available right in the app plus catch up on all episodes of the show and even view all of our online videos in one place download the app for free in the app store today This week's birthday shoutouts go out to Caitlin Maselli, Jeremiah Good, Ellen Lennox, Jeff Lisiak, Allie Beamer, Megan Maroney, and Shelby Dunham. Happy birthday to everyone. Now, planning a trip to Batu or just a virtual visit? Head to youtube.com slash attractions magazine, as I talked about earlier, for more than 25 videos from Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland. For even more on all things Black Spire Outpost, visit attractionsmagazine.com. Now we want to thank MEI, Mouse Fan, and Universal Fan Travel, our preferred travel agent. For a free quote with no obligation, visit meitravel.com. And thanks to Undercover Tourist, our recommended supplier of discount tickets to Orlando and California attractions. For more information, visit undercovertourist.com. Give Kids the World Village is teaming up with 16 of the U.S.'s theme and amusement parks for their Coasting for Kids nationwide event. Participants in this event who raise or donate at least $100 to support Give Kids the World will receive special Coasting for Kids passes, which give them access to exclusive perks at the park they choose to visit. All money raised by participants will help the nonprofit provide free week-long vacations to critically ill children and their families. If you are interested in taking part, head to gktw.org slash coasting. All right, so we have the big opening of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge under our belts. We've got another Star Wars coming up in a couple months, but 
Let's look at next week because already we have another big thing opening next week. Hagrid's Magical Creatures. Motorbike Adventure. Do, do, do. So long we have to split it up with the name. That's um, right. <laughs> I'm excited for Hagrid because I, and once I, I can't believe it's next week. I can't either, to be honest. Like, I just feel like we've just been waiting and waiting and eager and I'm so excited. And I know that, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. Hogsmeade is going to be full of all the people and that's okay because they're there for Hagrid. <laughs> exactly. And it'll be nice to see, you know, a big, another, a new big Potter opening again. Yes. Uh, in a space that, you know, popular ride, but it was never usually that long of a wait, but I'm sure this one will be a pretty long wait yeah. after it opens. Yeah. And I'll be really interested to see kind of like if we see any, you know, little hints from dragons or not. I don't know. I, I, I know for a fact, I can only tell you there are uh, there's at least one Dueling Dragons reference in the queue. When, yeah. when Theron got to go a few weeks ago for the construction tour, they showed him in one part of the queue, there is, spoilers, skip ahead to the end if you don't want to know this, but spoilers, in the beginning of the queue, there is a flag for a club at Hogwarts, the Dueling Club. Yeah. And the Dueling Club is represented by a red and a blue dragon. So it's like, I love it. Love it. I love it. Yes, that's going to be huge. We'll be there, so make sure you check out next week's show. I'm so excited. Exactly. Yes, thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you'll tune in again next week. Until then, visit your local attractions, try something new, stay safe, but most of all, have, have fun. fun. free meal per person ages three and up per night at a select Walt Disney World Resort quick service dining location. And I lost my voice and my oh. breath and... <laughs>